Welcome again, everybody. Uh, my name is E. I'm the Priya Outreach Director here at the New York State Coalition Against Sexual Assault. We're really excited to get the Haudenosaunee Creation Story webinar going here. We're joined by the seven by some folks from the Seven Dancers Coalition. I'll be introducing them and saying their bios shortly. But first, I want to reiterate that we've got closed caption available at the bottom of your screen. There will be a button that says live transcripts. Clicking on that should show you something that says show subtitle. And then you're also able to view the full transcript by clicking on live transcript there and then click view full transcript. So we're doing the Haudenosaunee creation story today, which is the latest in Niskasa's uh, webinar series where we're in co we're in community with the Seven Dancers Coalition represented today and then also interrupting criminalization. We were planning a statewide conference in June of 2020 that was going to bring together and provide a space for survivors, advocates, counselors, and other allied organizations and community members to develop knowledge and skills and courage to develop and implement community-centered practices to respond to harm and sexual violence. Due to COVID-19, that was of course canceled. So instead, we're doing a virtual series under that same name. And just briefly, Niskasa's mission statement is to end all forms of sexual violence and exploitation, and also to address the impacts of sexual violence and sexual assault. We're here with some folks from the Seven Dancers Coalition today. The Seven Dancers Coalition's mission is to uplift the families of indigenous communities by educating and restoring traditional values with the purpose of strengthening self-confidence and dignity. And they strive for an environment of peace and tranquility to heal all indigenous spirits. So I'll introduce some of the folks we'll be hearing from today from the Seven Dancers Coalition. Working the slideshow for the Seven Dancers will be Ron, Ron Mitchell, who also goes by Moon or Moon Javi. Moon's from the Snipe Clan in Aquasasan in New York. Moon is a proud Ankwe Hanwe, born and raised in Aquasasne his entire life. And Ron is currently in sobriety, has three and a half years on the Red Road, and has started working alongside our other panelists today in October of 2018. Moon's very teachable and enjoys giving back. And he helps the youth in prevention teachings, has a white bison training to facilitate talking circles, and also makes himself available any day or night for folks who are still in addiction and are still suffering. Moon loves to spread the message of peace, hope, and righteousness. We'll also be hearing from Harvey Hearn today. Harvey's sobriety date is June 21st in 1994. He went through rehab right next door to the house that he was moving into to work on. And there he met his uncle or, and mentor to be for the next 12 years. Harvey learned and teaches medicine wheel, three-way value system, respect, the creation story, sweat lodge and ceremonies, 12 steps and 12 traditions, mind mapping, Peacemaker's Journey, poems, and has watched movies on traditional based recovery. Harvey worked at PH for 22 years and traveled to and traveled presenting culturally based workshops with recovery in mind. Harvey now works with the Standing the Trees Back Up and the Saplings to Cedars program under the Seven Dancers Coalition. Harvey is also still spreading the messages of peace, power, and righteousness. We'll also be joined by Thomas Lerzore, who's also known as Prey. And Prey is from the Deer Clan of the Kanyan Kehake Nation. Prey is a proud father to 10 children and soon to be 11 and six grandchildren. Prey's childhood on an Indian reservation was filled with hardships such as alcoholism, drug addiction, 
living in third world housing situations and living conditions, crime, sexual and domestic violence, incarceration, and generations of surviving these trials and tribulations. Prey has also been exposed to rich culture and traditions involved in traditional healing and medicines, ceremony, songs, and dance, love, compassion, community sharing, and handing down knowledge and teachings. Today, he practices a traditional life free from drugs and alcohol and shares the message of hope and healing to all members of the community. And Prey now calls Seven Dancers home and is working with a youth program there, which is the Standing the Trees Back Up and the Saplings to Cedar. Pray is always spreading the message of peace, power, and righteousness. And so I'll be making a little bit of a container for us today here, but want mostly to give space to these excellent folks that we're working with. So for now, I'm going to hand over to Ron or to Moon to introduce himself a little bit more and also pass on to Harvey. Thanks so. And is my clan, which is Snipe. Uh, I live here in Akwazasne my entire life. And I don't know why this is really loud. Okay, so I know it. Okay, oh, it's going to do it again. So I'm going to come on Harvey's screen and do this real quick. But <clears throat> so, like I said, I have three and a half years of sobriety. Um, this living, uh, living a good life. Uh, I've I've went through Partridge House, um, and it's taught me a lot in the things that I needed help with. And uh, I was given an opportunity from Harvey and Amy here at Seven Dancers. And uh, they basically took a healthy risk with me. And uh, I haven't, I, I, I feel like I haven't disappointed anybody just yet, but uh, it's, it's, it's been really good. Um, just feel like being that sponge, you know, soaking things up and, uh, and, and helping others and taking the cultural aspect of what I've learned and turning it, turning it into, uh, how would I say this, modernization teachings and uh, teaching the respect, the honor and the loyalty to, uh, to women, to myself, to the men, children, elders, I had to teach it all to to keep uh, myself on this road and uh, to show others that it, it can be done. And that's all I have now. Sego, Gwego, what hot color day in the young guy? So, Paho, hold on a shoney, can you have a hake? I'm going home. I was a slon at the gate. My uh, sanctioned name is He Turned Around. And I got named after I got out of the inpatient drug and alcohol rehab center. And I went back to my roots, went back to uh, the culture, and I got a name in our place called Ganasisna, uh, which is uh, in English is a long house. And that long house, we're told, is where the sky meets the east and the sky meets the west. Everything underneath that is under the house. So uh, now it's more of a building that uh, is called a long house to uh, where we perform a lot of ceremonies that still take place to this day. Not as much right now because of the COVID stuff, but we're still having all the normal ceremonies. And uh, right now it's limited to the, the higher ups to do these ceremonies and keep them going. So, and uh, I'm from here in Agusasne, upstate New York, 
in uh, um, of the deer or wolf clan rather. I see prey joined us. That's why I thought deer because uh, he made it on. He was scurrying just like a deer earlier, just a few minutes ago, trying to get on. So me and Javi's been trying to stall a little bit. And Eric, thank you for uh, taking on some of that time. So now that we know he's here, so. But anyway, I'm here as a presenter and now uh, to share whatever I can, because I think uh, education is one of the biggest things and to identify uh, the three-way value system. What, what are we gonna use? What are we using? And what do we need to use? So there's a lot of conflict within self to understand, you know, what's, uh, which, which is which. So, uh, and some of it, maybe I can clarify. Some of it will help through uh, that knowledge as to why, because that's a, a lot of times, uh, that's the question when we're dealing with uh, agencies throughout New York State and with us throughout Turtle Island as to why, why, or why do we act the way we act? Why do we fight some of the agencies? Why do we uh, refuse help from certain agencies? And uh, a lot of that is just a paper trail. It's always a paper trail. And uh, we, we're, we have a hard time through uh, multi-generational trauma to sign papers. You know, it's a big thing. And you know, everywhere they got to sign a paper, got to sign a paper, got to sign a paper. So every time we sign papers, seems like we get in trouble, right? From our first car loans, uh, leases on buildings, anything like that. It, there's, it's pragmatic for our people. So to try to help educate and understand why. So uh, that, that's, uh, it's something I hope that we're going to share today in uh, some way, shape, or form. So, Nyawa. I guess that's up to you, Prey, to introduce yourself. Sego, Sego Guego, Gahwa Dodo Yungyaks, Oskanundo, Kanyaka Haga. Dodo is my name, uh, my sanctioned name that was raised at the Longhouse. Uh, it was my name from birth, but I didn't have it um, ceremony in Longhouse till I was uh, like maybe five years ago when my life was able to, uh, when my life was in the same direction as as the ceremony so um i'm dear clan of the you know us as the mohawk nation we call ourselves Kanyakahaga. we are people of the flint we are a part of the haudenosaunee confederacy we're keepers of the eastern door and um i work at seven dancers coalition that's that's where i work um but who i am is It's all about um, family and taking care of um, these responsibilities that um, that are upon us. And um, it's it's very hectic right now in our in our home. Um, and I'm trying to like I was going trying to get everything done and trying to hook up on the Zoom. And the boys are in school and. So it's been, been very, uh, very hectic. And I just want to say that, that every time I do stuff like this, um, I feel really humbled that, that I'm even asked to be a part of this. Because uh, in the past, in the past, I was like looking in from, from the outside at these at these events and uh it's changed like now now i'm able to to share my experiences with with everybody and uh <clears throat> in the hopes that it helps it helps them but as i share my own experiences i'm i'm helping myself by talking about things that that are that are bottled up inside of me uh, <clears throat> Right now, uh, our, we are, there's so much going on in so many different directions in my life. Um, we're, 
where my father is suffering uh, with heart uh, failure and they don't want to operate because it's too dangerous for his health and he's you know so really it's all about making him comfortable now so we're celebrating his life and I'm celebrating his journey and his he's completed that journey you know he's almost at the the completion point where he he returns and uh, and we're also celebrating the birth of our daughter tomorrow tomorrow it's it's scheduled that she comes and uh, so we're celebrating the birth of life and we're also celebrating the completion of life and um, it's very uh, the one thing that I really hope for and that would make me so happy and, and grateful is that my granddaughter and my father both get to meet in this world and they both get to make that spiritual connection in this world because my, my daughter is, is from the sky world and she still has those memories and those experiences and that way of life, the way of being. The little ones have that. So I'm hoping that the little one can comfort my father in his, in his time, you know, in spiritual ways and a connection, you know, that's my, my hope. That's what would make me very grateful. And that, and that completes the, the circle of life right there. It's, it's, it's living in our own times. And uh, where our, ch our children come from is the sky world. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But, um, they, we come from the sky world and we return to the sky world so um, in my life right now that circle is 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 complete i see the beginning and i see the end and, uh, the only way that um, the only way to be right now with my father is to just comfort him and uh um make him enjoy like help him enjoy his uh his final days you know and that's that's just what we do every day so, you don't go for uh, allowing me to be here. I'm gonna uh, go back to whoever. If I, are we doing more introduction or tell me what to do, man? I'm I'm just here. Yeah, you know. here, Cray. Uh, if you want to kick things off, then you're more than welcome, and uh, you you can call in Harvey when you need. But yeah, go for it. Harvey, did you do the opening? You want to do it now? <laughs> got got Niwa. <laughs> like uh, the, our last gathering here with you guys on. Uh, we, we did a real breakdown of the Ohanda Galawadikwe, which is the words before all else, which we call the Thanksgiving address. So I'm, I'm going to do it in a, a short version of the way it's normally done for the, the beginning of a ceremony. So. Ask me the way Ask the way out now, Ungot Nicona, the Nutanita no Hoda Adotna, Yutini Stata, O Honja, Donna Tonis on Nicona. Ask the way out now, Ungot Nicona, the Nutanita no Hoda Adotna, Onega Suta, the Nut Gatio Suta, Donna Tonis on Nicona. Ask the way out now, Ungot Nicona, the Nutanita no Hoda Adotna, O Honda Suta, the Nut Anunga Suta, Donna Tonis on Nicona. Ask the way out now, Ungot Nicona, the Nutanita no Hoda Adotna. Kahe suma, dono neon hondessa, dona tenezoani gora. Ask the way out net unqua nicona, dono tenita no hora dona, gil hequa, dono gil tosala, dona tenezoani gora. Ask the way out net unqua nicona, dono tenita no hora dona. Gantilio, dono oscurunda, dona tenezoani gora. Ask the way out net unqua nicona, dono tenita no hora dona. Oguila suma, dono watta, dona tenezoani gora. 
Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, o čītā, a, a, gūna, tu nu agvaks, donijā te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, kā īli ni jau lāge, tu nu jūki sutta, lata vēlas, donijā te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, o čītā, a, a, gūna, tu nu agvaks, donijā te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, se kua džiho, kekka negu, ka lakva, tonia te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, juki sutta, asin tāna ka lakva, tonia te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, o čista nu un gua suha, tonia te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, skanja dalīja, tonia te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, kā īli ni jau kvētike, tu nu te nezuvā ni kūna. Asko doja, ne, un gua ni kūna, tu nu te nite nohorā to, ne, Sam gaya diso, toni on tene zoani gura. A lot of times I take this time to apologize for anything I have omitted or offended. That's not my intention to do so. So I, I ask that be taken care of, you know, because uh, I am but a human being and I make mistakes. And, uh, and I don't know for sure. I guess if you play back the tape, you'll see if I did one twice. And sometimes when we do something twice like that, we're told that, Whatever that was, wanted to hear it again. The spirits wanted to hear it again. So they put it inside of me to say it again, to get extra recognition, extra acknowledgement. So if that's what happened, that is, the spirits around us are asking for that. So when we duplicate things like that, that's what our elders tell us. It's not about making a mistake in that way. It's about the spirit wanting to hear it again. So with, with that, I say, now go Donato. Nyao go, Harvey. Nyao go, what hat kaladeni? My friend. Oh, here we go. So, when I started uh, my introduction, uh, I spoke about uh, what, what my family's going through, the experiences we're going through, and um, when our children come to us, they come from the sky world, Galum Hyage, and they they choose what family that they want they want to raise them. The, the unborn spirit will choose who the father is going to be. Will choose who the mother is going to be. Will choose which family to come to, to be raised by, to be loved by. And I'm so honored that the female life that will be here tomorrow chose us to raise her. That's that's the greatest honor in, in I can even think of. And is the the greatest honor and it also is the greatest responsibility. Because my job is to protect and provide and to teach and to share with this this young female life you know our house is our boys we have Katie she's the female in here and then there's three boys with my twin boys and my my young two-year-old and me so we're, we're dominating over here and now that the female life is coming into our home um, it's going to balance it out. It's going to balance our lives out. It's going to balance the struggles out, you know, because uh, because our lives are changing because the female life is coming in and female life needs to be um, nourished and protected because they are the keepers. They are the ones who everything depends on. And it is, is, is it our, one of our most important jobs is, as men is that we comfort the female life. We protect whatever comes near them. So um, our, our daughter is coming from the sky world. And, uh, 
uh, our our creation story begins before time. It begins in a place that we call Galunhyage, that place in the sky. And, uh, to me, all these stories are real historical um, events that have been passed on in the oral tradition that we do for many, many generations. So in my, my eyes, in my mind, everything that I'm telling you has, has been here, it has come to pass. And even the things that are not here yet have been told. Organized life in order to... This is um, just, just how I view it in my, in my mind. So in the sky world, there was a tree in the center of the, of the area that they lived in. Uh, some say it was an island in the sky. Some people say that we came from the Pleiades, the star, star system. And a lot, many of our ceremonies depend on where the Pleiades star system is in the sky. And when we do our ceremonies here, we are doing the ceremonies at the same time as our ancestors are in Galunyage, in the sky world. So our connection is still strong and it's, it grows every day. I'm trying to uh, give you a good, good view, but my kids are studying inside. <clears throat> in the center of Galunyage, there was a tree and that tree is known as the, the tree of knowledge or the tree of life. And on that tree, it had every fruit and every medicine and everything that the Ungohoe people would ever need. There was a man who was a caretaker of this tree and it was his job, his duty was to care for the tree and not let no harm come to it, not let nobody um, mess with it in any way. As um, the sky woman, when she was a young young female, um, not yet of uh, mother uh, childbearing age, uh, she was known to be very, very skilled and gifted in the gardens. She has, uh, that was her gift was that she, anything she planted would grow to abundance. And it would, it would do it in such a natural way that it wasn't even like work. It was just, it, we just do things and, and everything happens in the, in the order that they're supposed to. As long as we're doing our part and we're living in a way that we're, we're meant to as, as uh, peaceful, peace-loving beings. You know, as long as we're walking in a good way, you know, everything happens in a natural way and it happens effortlessly. So her, her gift was that she was skilled beyond her, her age in garden life and knowledge of the gardens. When she began to grow, um, she was kind of like an arranged marriage. She was uh, meant to be a uh, man and wife with the the man who guarded the, or the man, the caretaker of the tree of life. She went there, they came together, and um, soon afterwards, uh, she became pregnant. And she was a uh, carrying child. And I know that when, when a female, when a woman is carrying child, they have uh, mood swings, I guess, and they have cravings, and you know, it's it's like very a very exciting time, and it's it can be difficult, but it, it's more uh, it's it's so so much change is happening that everything of every day is brand new. So, the the sky woman, Gaji Jizu, she was her name means mature flower because of, of her, her maturity in knowledge and skills of the garden at such a very young age. 
So she was with with child, and she she was having uh, cravings, and she was also having visions about that there was something under the tree of life, and in our way, we we honor our our dreams as reality, as messages from from the spirit world, from uh, from all creation. That that's one way that we receive our messages. So when we receive a message in a dream, we're gonna we, we should do something about it. We should um, go forward on it, or else we're gonna get uh, nudges to push us in that direction by our spirit helpers, and it, that can be painful. So when we when we realize our gifts and dreams and visions, it is our duty and our responsibility to follow up on that. Because uh, if we don't do the work, then then it just it's just uh, a vision. It doesn't become reality. So, Kaji Jizu she had a, a vision, a dream. She had a dream three nights in a row about that there was something under that tree, and that she needed to look under there. And some some with the, when her her cravings too, she was. She was shown in a vision that there was medicines under there, under the tree, in the roots, that she needed to um, to know about and to probably to to plant and to harvest and to administer the medicine. So she talked to her husband, and of course he's the caretaker of the tree, and she's asking him to kind of dig at the root of it and get that little medicine or get that hole where she can look into it. And um, he says, well, I'm not supposed to, you know, as, as my, I'm a man and my duty is to protect that tree. And what you ask of me is it goes against what my job is. The woman, she agrees because um, it's, it's a, uh, a place of Scott Nigula, of a good mind, a place where every being has a good mind, you know. So their con their conversations are not screaming matches, like like I was used to when I was a young young person. You know, so their conversation is a as a, a loving, um, just a loving form of communication i don't even know if they speak words through their mouths or they just feel send feeling and and thoughts you know so she she agreed with what he said because it is true he, he is there to protect the tree and, and he's not supposed to let that um let anything come of it however he is also a husband and he is a father to be and when the mother of your child asks you to get something for her and for her baby, a man will not refuse and he will do anything in his power to, to make her happy, make her comfortable, make sure the baby's getting everything that it needs. So he agreed to, to what she asked of him. He dug out the roots and uh, got that medicine. And as he did that, the tree of life uh, leaned over and then it toppled and it fell to the ground. I can just imagine the shock on his face when when his his work of protecting the tree now lays on the ground. You know, that's that's to me, I can almost laugh at the at the shock of it. <laughs> so, when the tree fell, it left a, a hole in the in the, the floor, the ground of of Galun Yahage. and the female uh, Gajit Jizu, the Sky Woman, she probably realized what was happening because her visions and her dreams were telling her about. There's something underneath that tree that you need to see. So she went to the hole and she peered into it and she couldn't see nothing but blackness. So she looked even further, but still she could see nothing. So she leaned in as far as she could. And at that moment, she lost her balance and, 
and started falling into the hole. As she fell in the hole, she reacted like as, as we do when we fall. We reach for anything we can to, to break our fall. So as she fell in the hole, she reached around the hole and she grabbed seeds of medicines and seeds of foods that will sustain everything that is to come. So when we talk about that connection to the sky world, we talk about certain plants and certain medicines that came at that moment when, when the sky woman entered this realm, she brought that with her. So when we use the medicines, we know that this came from Galunyage also, and it helps them just as it helps us. When the sky woman fell into the hole, she fell for a very long time. <clears throat> By the way, Harvey, I got your, uh, your cedar fan. I'll give it to you later. As she fell into the hole, some say that she heard the sounds of, of rattles as she was falling. And this song of the women's dance reminds me of her when, when, she, when she fell, when she made that transition from Galanayage to this world. I'm going to share a verse of that with you now. <clears throat> verses of the women's dance we always send our voices up high and when we send our voices up high to me as um, encouragement and protection when I send my voice up high as our when we, when we end the verses in my mind I'm sending my voice up high and I'm carrying her down slowly gently just like the birds did when, when they seen this being falling from this place in the sky. The waterfall, the water animals, the fish, maybe some fish. There was some creatures living in this place that as the sky woman fell, she noticed there was a blue marble. So she was describing what the earth looked like, the form of it. It was all blue. So she came down. As she got closer, she noticed that there was no land there. It was just water. The birds looked up and they, they noticed that she was coming down and she was she was fear in fear. She was um, yelling when she fall when we fall down, we yell. We make some noise that is purely spiritual. And the birds heard this and they, they seen that she wasn't anything like they've seen before. She didn't have wings, she couldn't fly. She didn't have gills, so she couldn't swim. And they said, I, I think if she continues her fall, she's going to get hurt when she hits the, the water. And the birds decided to make a decision, come together and help her. So they went up to help her. They eased her fall. They asked her, is it okay if we help you? Are you okay? Is, is everything all right? Are you, you, seem, you seem very stressed. What can we do to help you? They, they formed a blanket underneath her with all their wings. And they slowly brought her down 
as they were coming down, they looked and they said, we can't put her in the water because she, she can't survive there for too long. As they were bringing her down, they noticed a, a large sea turtle was, was swimming in the water. And as, as our ways are, we have to ask permission, ask consent, ask if it's okay. So the birds sent, sent a messenger to the turtle and said, is it all right if we land this being on your back? Because we don't think she can survive in the water. We don't know what kind of being she is, but she looks fragile. The turtle agreed. He said, yes, of course you can rest her on my back. So the birds came down and slowly, like a, like a feather as it floats down to the ground, you know, they brought her down and rested her on that turtle. I'm gonna move. I'll go in there. I'll go in. As they rested her on the turtle, They asked her, they said, because she was still um, like frightened. And they said, why, why, are you so, why are you so frightened? You're safe right here. We, we put you down on the turtle and everything's okay. But Jesus says, I have a baby in my belly that I need to make sure that she has a, a home. She has land to grow crops on. You know, and I don't see any of that here. I don't see anything that here that was in the skyward where I came from. And they said, we know of a little bit of, uh, boys, try and keep down. And one of the, the otter, the beaver, or the, um, I can't remember the, the third one. Uh, one of them said, I know where there's earth. This dirt that you speak of that you that would make you so happy. And uh, she said, yeah, where is it? She's, and uh, the water animal says, when I was a young boy, my grandfather, he told me about this earth that was at the bottom of the ocean. He said, I've never seen it, but because my grandfather told me it was so, that's the way it is. It's there. And if we come, if we go get some of that dirt, some of that sacred earth for you, would that make you happy? And she said, "Yes, that would make me happy." Would you? I, I would. I would really appreciate that. So one by one, they they went down and tried to to get that that earth at the bottom of the ocean, and it was very deep. One by one, the animals that attempted to get it for her would rise back up after a very long time. They would rise back to the surface belly up. Um, they didn't survive. They sacrificed their lives in order for um, the happiness of this being and, and the continuation of life as, as it is now. They were the first ones, the first, what would you say, first true heroes to give up themselves in order for the, for the life to continue. The last one came up, we're going to call him uh, Muskrat, because that's where I have Muskrat that live right across the road. And so I'm going to call it the Muskrat. He went down and he, after a very long time, he floated up also on his belly. He didn't survive. And when the other animals in, in grief brought him back to where they were, uh, they looked in his palm, in his clenched paw, and they opened it up, and inside of that paw, he had a little bit of dirt. So he made it to the bottom, he made it to what he needed to do, and he came back up, and they, the animals took that dirt, and they handed it to the Sky Woman. And she took that dirt, and she mixed it with some of her seeds. She put it down on the turtle's back, and as she was doing this, she was moving her feet in a way where it was it was 
pushing the dirt. We dance in the longhouse in, in a uh, counterclockwise direction. And that way, because of the way Gajitiza was dancing that first time on the back of the turtle, she was dancing in that direction, that counterclockwise direction that we still honor today. As she was putting this seeds down and this dirt down, the, the, the earth and the turtle's back actually started to grow and get bigger and bigger every time she went around. And as she went around, she was dropping seeds. So everything that is here had its beginning in the sky world. The, all the trees, all the, the grass, you know, everything that she, she put here at that time was, I was I'm going to say, a mirror image of what the sky world was like. That's what she created. So, as, uh, oh, hey, watch that laptop. Oh, no, 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 no. The sky woman that uh, danced in a counterclockwise direction and when today to this day um, everything that we do in ceremony is a representation of, of actual events that happen and we we recreate those events as as a way of keeping them alive and and passing it on to the next generation so what she was doing when she was dancing is the same thing that the, the women and the female life do at Kanusasana at the longhouse where we celebrate. And she created this beautiful place and all that that goes with it. All the life, the trees that came with her from the, from the sky world. And when she got done with that, now she was able to be comfortable because now her baby had a home and her baby had a place to live and survive now. A mother's greatest love is to provide for that, for that young child you know, and give everything for them. And we still honor that today. Sky woman is, is pregnant and uh, she is ready to give birth. She gave birth to a daughter and her daughter grew up, they say she grew up very fast and eventually she became pregnant with the spirit of, when the spirit of the west winds came to visit her. There was uh, what, what they call immaculate conception at that point right there. And uh, the grandmother, now now the mother, but she, now that the twins are, are, are there in the belly, she, the grand, Sky Woman now becomes grandmother. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Harvey tell about the birth of the twins. Um, and later on, he can just... Uh, um, let me know when when he wants me to jump back in. But because because of my me and my wife, uh, we're we're so close to the birth of our children, of our child, our baby girl, and that as a man, I'm not supposed to hunt. I'm not supposed to hurt. I'm not supposed to see blood. I'm not supposed to all these things that like I have to not do anymore until the baby comes, then I can begin again to hunt. I can begin to, to defend, to do the things that, that I do as a man, you know. But right now, I, I cannot see these things. And, I, and if I speak of these, it'll be in my mind. And um, that's why I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll, uh, ask Harvey if he can share this part of the story and uh, however far he wants to, you know.
Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so uh, as you see, too, so far where, where we're at right now, everything has another backstory. Everything has a backstory to the backstory. Oh, why, why is it like this? Then it's a backstory to that. Well, how did that come about? There's a backstory to that. So in reality, when we have our elders in uh, sharing this creation story, it can take a week, five hours each day for five days for them to get through just for that time, you know. Then it takes and it continues. So, and this is where we're behind a lot in our teachings because of uh, the educational system that has changed since contact, where we're learning other things instead of, you know, this uh, compassion and nurturing and respect and honor and stuff like that. And so that's again, where this comes at this time when uh, these twin boys were in the mother's womb and, uh, it, it said that they, they started quarreling right there. They started uh, probably kicking each other. Saying, get, get over there. You're sitting right on me. You know? So all the women that has been pregnant, I can only speak when my wife was pregnant. And she would say the baby's sitting right on her bladder or right on her kidneys. Right? And once in a while, get kicked and stuff and see how that was happening. So I, I can't imagine uh, with twins inside to have them fighting for position, fighting for food or oxygen or whatever it's transpiring in there. So that's what was happening with the mother with these two boys. Huh? So when it came time for these two boys to be born, they say that uh, that one come out the right way, all handsome and had a good demeanor about him and had a good aura about him. And uh, like you could tell that this that this was this boy had uh, had goodness in his heart. And the, the other twin, they say that he he wanted to beat that first twin. So he come out under the armpit on the side of his mother. He, he burst out there. And in so doing, it killed his mother. And the, what we say, the good twin, his name was actually Dehalumiawago. The grandmother had given his name uh, on, upon birth. And the other twin, his name was Sawiskala. So one was uh, like a flint, a dull flint. So it's kind of what, what we call, what we call uh, Gawilakso. It's like, uh, you know how, uh, uh, like in English, they say the devil made me do it. That's, that's kind of like the loose interpretation of it, but because that in our uh, history it was about the Suiskala, the dark side uh, made we turn to the dark side to do that it, you know more mischievous huh? so that was his name so when when they were arguing over you know the boy said why'd you do why'd you do, do that to our mother why, why couldn't you come out the right way and uh, he said well I tried but you're in my way so I had to get out in the meantime, the grandmother, when she see that the mother was passed on, she was like, well, what happened here? What's going on here? And Suiskala pointed at his brother, said, he did this. And so the grandmother started mistreating Dehruhiwago right from that point. And uh, she blamed him for uh, doing this to her daughter. So there was a lot of uh, effect from that. 
So uh, I'm going to get into that a little bit down the road here to show again that from that backstory, you know, so some of the things that were had become of that, what was going on. And I, I thought these boys were always at each other, always uh, uh, Swiskala was always trying to one up Dehlonyuago, but he just couldn't seem to pull it off. Dehlonyuago would make like roses and flowers and stuff, and Swiskala would put thorns on it and stuff to uh, to make it. You know, you see that rose, you want to go pick it, and you grab it, and you get thorned, and it's like upsetting. So it changes the mindset, huh? So there was a lot of the animals were the same way. When uh, Dehlonyuago was uh, creating animals and stuff, so Wiskala would come behind him and try to alter these animals to give different effects to it. To just kind of like messing with him all the time. In the meantime, that uh, the grandmother kept uh, taking Sewiskala aside. And so uh, Dehlonyuago uh, was looking for something to uh, to be okay with, you know, to be okay with. So again, there's a back story to that when, like, he went back to visit his father, and he went back to talk with him to ask him things, huh? and uh, on how to, like, how to get past these things. So for us here, you know, whether it's a counselor, a sponsor, a, a psychiatry, or whatever that is that we go to seek help from. So a lot of us, it's simple. Uh, and back then was the elders. To go to the elders, the elders been a long, around a long time, so they had a lot of information. But these guys, <laughs> because the human being wasn't even came to be, uh, who, who would they go? So they were trying to go back to the sky world to ask the, the people up there how, how to conduct themselves, you know? like. So there was a lot of uh, animosity. There was a lot of jealousy. There was a lot of blame. There was a lot of abuse. But there was also compassion. There was also love. There was also nurturing. And it, and it showed a lot of times with Dehlonyuago, uh, with Sawiskala. Even in one of the earliest fights, that when they were fighting over what to do with the body, that, uh, well, that's when the grandmother passed. Huh? When the grandmother passed, they fought over the body and they said, so Suiskala had ended up pulling the head right off the grandmother and it went into the sky world. So that's what made our grandmother the moon. Because Suiskala just wanted to throw her off the edge of the earth and just say, yeah, she's done, get rid of her. And Dehlonhiwago wanted to bury her properly. So there was, there was a lot of like two sides, that, uh, the light and the darkness, they said. So they finally, Dehlonyuago finally said, okay, this is enough now. We're going to have to straighten this up once and for all. And that went back to, the, they were going to fight. They were going to fight, actually fight. Swiskala so so got a spear. And Dehlonyuago got the antlers from a deer. And they started to fight. And, uh, you know, there was... There was some good rumblings on and looked one way to the other. And finally, Suiskala thought he had Dehlonyuago and he lunged at him. And Dehlonyuago moved out of the way and got Suiskala down. And uh, Suiskala was going to drive his lance into him, but he got him with the antlers. He blocked it. And uh, Dehlonyuago got the upper hand and Suiskala so finally surrendered. He tapped out and he says, uh, okay, okay, you know. So they decided to split the world. They said uh, Dehlonhiwago was going to get the daytime and Suiskala so was going to get the nighttime. And so they tried again to live and coexist, and, but there was always things happening. Always Suiskala so was trying to mess with uh, Dehlonhiwago and his creation. So they, they end up separating the land and uh, put Suiskala over here and Dehlonhiwago stayed over here. So they had to 
go across, I guess what we would call the ocean now, they would have to go across the ocean to meet up. So it made it a little, you know, not so, uh, not so easy to entertain uh, the mischievousness and uh, interruptions and uh, confrontations were, were cut down a lot. But uh, Swiskala was always, always trying to see what his brother was up to. You know, always trying to go because when he when he would like spy on him, I guess, and go over, he would see a lot of beautiful things, and he would get envious of that. And uh, I'm I'm having a hard time to keep it to this point because it takes me to the next point. So uh, I'm uh, I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and show something else right now. So as soon as I get a pen here. So there's there's a few there's a few like uh, specific events that take place that uh, really catches my attention and I, I really try to uh, incorporate in my teachings with uh, everyday activities to show this uh, in different ways to, to just to bring the awareness. So we go back to the original, there was uh, the sky world, there was a tree, it was uprooted, there was fruit and I'm quite the artist, right? So that there was fruit that come down and a uh, uh, sky woman fell. The birds caught her, landed on turtle's back. Grandmother had a daughter. They had twins. They went to Agua and Suiscala. Oh, that's the wrong way. One was positive. They went to Agua and Suiscala was more negative. Just to make a long story short. So you see how that is, huh? So with that, the way it plays out, I mean, there, there, there's some good slides that we have. I don't have them here yet. We're, we're putting it together. But this is basically this creation story where we pretty just shared. And we got to this point of the twins being born. So, but when we look at this, what was brought to my attention was the continuation of creation, right? Creation is in a conception. So Praise talked about his new daughter coming into this world. So there was conception. I don't think it was immaculate conception because it wasn't. Because <laughs> he talked about this with the west wind visiting the daughter and stuff, right? But if we look at this from a scientific, so we have the canal. Again, I keep saying I'm going to look up these terms. But, so we have what came out of this is the egg, the female egg. And the birds that are going up there maybe can be represented more as sperm. So we have this conception when the sperm meets the egg. And then when that lands on the wall in the womb, creation starts, that baby starts to be born. So when we look back to creation and how our world came down, like Prey said, from the Pleiades possibly, and how it turned in. But when we look at simple conception, it's the same story. So we know now, like the women have the three generations of egg already in their bodies. And they have that number 
and that's it. Where the men as the donors had to have a is an infinite number. Which one's which? Infinite means never ends. Infinity. Infinity and beyond. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. So you look at that. It, it's still happening to this day. So a woman doing creation, being part of creation, makes her a goddess because she is creating a human form with the help of a donor, which is a man. So it's still happening. There's still creation. Just like our creation story that come and come true, all that is still happening to this day. And that man is the donor and he's the protector of that creation. So somewhere along these lines, we lost or forgot or just were never taught how important it is. Like Praise talking about with this baby getting it ready. I mean, I've been hearing it for eight months, nine months now. <laughs> everything he had to do to start preparing everything. I got three daughters. So I know that change, the change in the dynamics when a female, extra female comes into the house, let alone the original female, the wife, the mother. And looking at that from where I was 25 years ago to where I am now, that change up of my responsibility as a father, as a husband, as a, now a grandfather, as a brother, See, all these things that our, our duties are, I didn't know them when I was out there. My education was different. It was very confusing. So when I start coming back to our culture and start to understand this and give back to the female their rightful position in the world, you know, how close they are and how life-given they are. So they're goddesses of creation. And as I am as a donor and a protector of that creation. So... Going back and like mentioning all those things, like the blaming, there was abuse, but there was love, there was compassion. So there was many, many, many words that had transpired in original creation. So when we look at these things and feel these things as human beings, we didn't invent them. They were here right from the beginning of time. It was just a matter of giving that choice of how to use them. So if I carry shame, I should acknowledge it, be aware of it, and then fix it. We as human beings learn how to carry shame forever, for a long time, not letting it go, hanging on to it, carrying us. The biggest thing was grieving, that grieving. We see when the mother first passed, when the grandmother passed, then when it got into the human beings, when the human beings first passed, that grieving, the shock, they didn't even understand what that was. We had to go through a whole nother teachings of understanding what death, what meant, and that whole set of guidelines. So that's a whole nother thing, yeah. But for right now, these things that were put here, okay? So now, I'll go over to some Catholicism in, uh, so up here in the sky world, I'm going to say these people were gods. They were all creators. They all had the ability to create. That was how the beings were, you know. They were creators. So something that can create, I know from, a, I guess, an English thing again, too, is to say they're gods. Gods create things, huh? So when we look on this side, we look at it as the one God. Then we can look at it as angels. Then we had the good angels and the negative angels, right? I guess, I think they call them the archangels. So they all had their duties, though. So how do we, how did they perform those duties? You know, there's, you know, like Gabriel, Ezekiel, and uh, I think on the other side was Simon. Uh, Garfunkel? No, I don't think Garfunkel was one. Uh, that was a joke, so. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to tell with my mask on that. I'm laughing, but that's, that was a joke. <laughs> so, 
So we looked to see where was this tree. This tree was down evidently in the Garden of Eden, right? So according to Genesis, that was in the Garden of Eden. So we had man. And then they said they took from man's rib to make woman. So again, that, that interpretation as to say that God created man and then took man's rib to make woman. Then they added to be subservient to man. So that was the exact opposite of how we had well, we had Sky Woman. Sky Woman, Mother Earth, Grandma Moon. All the clans were named after the women. Title holders were all named from women. All women based, everything female based. But on the other side of the world, you see it as male based. Woman was to be subservient to man. That tree down here in our tree up here showed a direct correlation of the balance of the universe for the earth to spin on its axis. It showed how that was made to be the balance. Okay. So we go back to a lot of that teachings with Law and his children and his wife and there was other other players. You have uh, uh, Abraham when he got sent to take one of his twins, his children, and those things that had happened. All these other tests and to see how that was. You know? I go back to the to the snake. I can never do this the way to make it look like this. But let's see, he's gonna come all over here. So the snake that was wrapped around that tree, I started to look at that from uh, that's because the male dominance, I don't know how that, that is, but it's the helix like on that of a ambulance. So there's a female and male DNA, but on the tree, there was only one DNA that was the male, so they gave male dominance. Even from the language, when Nehalom uh, Yuago did create man, he told man, he says, look after creation, and creation will always look after you. Everything you need is here. Take care of it, and it will take care of you. If you go to Genesis, when God came down to Adam and called to him and said, you know, what's going on here? And when Adam peeked out of the bushes and said, I'm over here. And he says, what are you doing over there? He says, well, I'm naked. So it says right there, God knew that he had ate from the fruit because how did he know he was naked? So he asked them, what's the meaning of this? Of course, Adam pointed to Eve, said she made me. So we look at those same words that were on this other side, the blame, the abuse that happened, the compassion, the jealousy, all that, that's all over here too. Right from the beginning of time. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things, the lust, the seven deadly sins that come and were brought up. But it went back to with God telling Adam and said, I put this out here for you. Why did you eat from that fruit? I gave you everything you needed in this garden of Eden. Why did you eat from that fruit? This was all yours. So again, from that mentality of saying, I put this out here for you, said, Okay, you know, this is mine, that's mine. Everything you see is mine. So when we look at the original contact of the, the mental state of mind from, I'll say the early Europeans, that's not, I don't even know, if the, maybe the Spaniards were first. 
But when they showed up on the shore and they said, hey, what are you guys doing on our land? God put this here for us. So that created confrontation. Okay. But that was what was given to them for their original instructions was that God created all things for mankind. Where ours said, take care of these things and they'll take care of you. So there was a different kind of interpretation there. So it, it makes a big difference when we're sharing these things, huh? to see where this comes from, how this interwove is interwoven into the big scheme of things, of spiritual matters and stuff. Huh? So take this farther. If this was the only awful, This was definitely Walco's place now in Suiskala. When they split the land that he went over the other side of the world, which we could call Asia. And because Suiskala had a big ego, why wouldn't it be his right up his alley to make big pyramids? Why did all the Animals have to be so big. That's supposed to be an elephant. Then you have the rhino. The hippo. You have the lion. The tiger. All, all, all more fierce and grandiose animals were, seem to be over there. You know, a lot of carnivores, even with some of the biggest snakes that were over there. I know they're finding some boas in Florida now that are pretty big, but back in the day, yeah. So then he had to feed some of these animals. He could put some zebras out there and some news out there and different, you know, feeding animals. But the idea of saying from now on, there's going to be only one God and that's going to be me. So it's all bow down to me. So this, I, I guess, the idealism of that, how that came about, the possibility or whatever. So I understand going back to it, it's the open-mindedness to, to be able to and look at these things. Because some of those uh, teachings are excellent teachings, excellent teachings. But what happens is man comes along, and says, oh, no, no, I meant this. See, so man's interpretation of some of the greatest writings in the world have been misinterpreted. So when we go back into history and look at these, who's interpreting this? How is it being interpreted, you know? So different things have been rewritten how many times by how many scholars to see exactly what did this mean? Where did this come from? So we didn't have as much stuff written down. It was more oratory, oratory, so we, we shared and we shared and we shared. And when it was shared like that, we couldn't go back to say, like when Prey was first talking about the animals going down for that dirt. Some people say it was the muskrat. Some say it was the beaver. Some say it was the duck, whatever it was, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that some land was brought up for, our grandmother to make this world and how it started and looking at that start of how that egg came from the sky and it was fertilized and had creation. So it goes back to those names of the sky woman and everything that all the players that brought it to this point. So it's one of those things that make it go, hmm. So on, on, a, on, a, on a humorous side, I will say, that they had man and woman, and every time man wanted to leave the garden, whoa, man, you're not going anywhere. So that's why she got that name, whoa, man, because man can do nothing after that. So <laughs> that, was, that was, it's easier to keep a straight face when I got this mascot, I can tell you that much. <laughs> And then I can't see all you guys either. So I like getting the reaction from the people I'm talking to to see when they get it, the, whether they get more serious or they get out in laughter too. So, but anyway, so I, I, that's, that's what I wanted to share. So I'm going to pass it back to Galadodo.
and mm. see where he's at right now. Uh, you go, Harvey. You know, you know, for the, the good words. And <clears throat> when, uh, when Harvey was speaking about the twins, the Halunia Wago, I don't know, it's a whiskola, um, and their, their struggles of uh, uh, right and wrong. I always imagine the Halunhiwago having a good mind. And uh, all, a lot of our songs, they, they have meaning and they have uh, ties to certain events, certain animals, certain seasons or medicines, plants. You know, all of our songs have that, that uh, connection. And every time we talk about the Halunhiwago, when He's creating these good things. Um, I imagine uh, what we do at, as a standing quiver song, we're, we're singing and putting our energy into um, whatever it is that, that's in front of us right now that we're doing. So as, as the Halloween Hawago was creating these, the, the animals and the, the beautiful rivers and the land, as he was creating those things, I can, I, in my imagination, in my mind, I hear him singing as he's doing this. And uh, just, just, this is just me. I, it, it's what helps me in my, uh, my journey of, of uh, keeping a good mind and treating every human being as a sacred being, treating all females as the carriers and the givers of life that they are. And in doing so, I cannot harm them. I only protect them now. So here's a verse of uh, Standing Quiver. And it, it gives energy, it gives our energy and our strength and our power and our intentions to whatever it is that in front of us. So as, as I'm singing this, I'm, that's, that's what's happening here. I'm offering those encouragement and, uh, in, for anything that we may be, we may be going through. Aga yo ni yo hane hane yo hane ya Aga yo ni yo hane hane yo hane ya Aga yo ni yo hane hane yo hane ya Yo hane hane yo hane hane Jega no ani yo hane hane yo hane ha As as we sing those songs in in uh in honor and um remembrance and carrying on the tradition of of our ancestors we as as we share these stories and these experiences uh, i get my medicine out of it uh, i, I want to thank everybody out there for listening to to what we had to say um, my sharing this has helped me and my family in our time right now and i hope that it's helped you in in, uh, in similar ways, and <clears throat> when uh, Harvey was talking about our grandmother, the moon, and that she always favored the whiskola, the one who lied to her, even though she she treated the Halunhiwago in a harsh way, um, she still loved them, and she still had the in unconditional love. Because the, our grandmother Moon watches over the nighttime world for her favorite grandson, Sawiskala. But she also comes out during the day sometimes to keep an eye on the Halunhiawago. You know, so she's showing that unconditional love. And that connection to grandmother Moon is the female she decides when the females, when, when the mothers are going to give birth. Our grandmother moon will decide that. And last night I looked up at the moon and it's getting full. It's, it's 
real close to being full. And when the when our grandmother is full, that's when she pulls pulls the, the life, greets them in this world. So it's getting close. It's getting really close. And, um, I don't know if there's any any more that that uh, I can go into right now. Just that when when Dehalunhiwago created all all human beings, he created uh, four colors of people. He created red, black, yellow, and white, and all shades in there. So whenever like I think about racism, whenever uh, I think about that, I go back to to the beginning. We're all one people, you know. We were all created together at the same time with different gifts. And they said that he, he separated us in the beginning because we co we couldn't get along. We fought with each other in uh, races. So he separated us in this world. And, and it was said that in a time when all races can come back together and get along and, and contribute to the health of Mother Earth, that will be like the, the next beautiful time on this Earth. Right now, Mother Earth is cleansing herself with this COVID-19, I believe that. That Mother Earth is, is in a cleansing. She'll cleanse herself periodically throughout time. Whenever us human beings uh, forget what we're supposed to be doing. Forget our original instructions. So now in this time of cleansing that Mother Earth is going through, um, I believe it's a good thing. Um, sometimes when we're in the garden, if we let the weeds grow, it chokes out the healthy plants. So we have to weed. Sometimes in the forest, when the sick trees, the unhealthy trees are making the, the healthy ones sick, we have to take down the sick ones. A fire goes through the woods, it cleanses out all the stuff that needs to go and, and continue on its journey. It's circular journey of creation. So at this time, um, I don't, uh, I feel, I feel for the ones suffering through this. I also feel love for Mother Earth right now. And I feel hope that my grandchildren, my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren will have a place to call home and it'll be healthy. Because in this time right now, I believe we are in a time of great change that everybody can can make a huge difference. And uh, yeah, I'll go. I want to thank my family, my my wife and my children, and my boys, and you know my father. And I want to thank them because when I do these things, it it takes me away from them for a little while. You know. So I, I have to ask them if it's okay that I do these things to share with the people because it, I, have a, I have a responsibility here. So I wanna thank my family, my wife, my children you know, for, for being part of this, for helping me be a part of this. You know, go and done it all on this end. Thanks so much, Prey, and thanks so much, Harvey and Moon, for all your sharing so far. Today's just been absolutely excellent. It's much appreciated. We're really so blessed to have our relationship with Seven Dancers and to keep doing more work with you all, to be making spaces to hear your cultural sharings, 
you know, you all have been there to share so openly and we are just more than honored to, that you keep offering that invitation. We can't wait to be doing more with you all. So Eric, thank you. Eric, one thing that I'd like to share. Yes, please go ahead. When we, we work with the men, um, domestic abuse, violence, um, alcoholism, uh, illegal activity, criminal. Um, when we work with them, what, what I try and do, what I try and share with them is, is the cultural, uh, the knowledge that we have in our culture. Because if I'm like me, myself, I follow the cultural ways because it helps me to live in a, a peaceful and a harmonious way with my, my female partner. You know, this culture, these stories, these, um, all of these teachings, they teach me as a man today how to respect women how to protect women instead of harming them. You know? So we share this with our men who are struggling right now with, with um, abuse, addictions. You know? We share the connection that our culture has to, uh, to making our lives better today. You know? So I'll, I'm very grateful that uh, when I first started my journey, uh, Harvey was, was, was around you know? and uh, he was there to greet me. And um, that's how he's, he was before and now Moonjabi came uh, at the door and I greeted him, you know, and I appreciate him the way and in the day that he walked into this, this journey, you know. So one day Jabi will be, he's doing it now. One day he'll be picking, helping, a helping hand, you know, an encouraging word that's going to affect somebody's life. It's not only going to affect the man that we work with, but it's going to affect his family and that circle that, that goes around him. You know, all his loved ones are going to be affected in a, in a positive and healthy way. And these, these lessons are all in these stories. Our, our matrilineal society is built on the fact that we honor and put our women upon our shoulders, you know, that's how we are as a people. And when we remind our men, that's who we are. That's who they are. They begin to change their ways. You know, it's, it's inevitable. Yeah, I'll go for, uh, for listening. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Prey. Ron and Moon, it's been excellent to have you. Prey, always a blessing. If you mm -hmm. want to say goodbye quickly. We we really appreciate it there, Rune. Always great. Oh, Nagi Wahe, Jabi, I'll go first. <laughs> oh, Nagi Wahe, Ganalunqua. All I gotta say, Ganalunqua in our Ganyagahaga language is it loose, loosely translated to English. It means I love you. But in our language, what we say when we say Ganalunqua is that it means I'm gonna wrap you in my spirit and my medicine. So when we say Gunalunko, that means I'm, I'm bringing you into my circle. So, Yango Dano Gunalunko. Yango Pray. Just for myself, um, it's been a real honor to do this today. You know, uh, we got to talk with E yesterday and you know the laughter that we bring to the table and you know and when it comes down to this to get serious you know we can get serious also and you know Harvey was hiding behind that mask you know making some jokes and I don't know if anybody can see it or not but I'm over here giggling because I know what he's doing and he does it all the time but it's <clears throat> you know getting serious bringing the laughter to the table it's just been a great honor, you know, and I can't thank Trey, Harvey, Amy enough, you know, giving me this opportunity to come aboard, join the team, and uh, I'm getting chills right here, just speaking in a live audience kind of thing right now, right? And that's what made me excited about this is it's like, it's time to grow. And like Trey said, you know, it, um, pretty soon it will be my time to, you know, do a presentation and, and things in that matter. And it's, it's just been a real honor to be here. And, uh, you know, um, 
when I get to do the talking circle and tell my story a little bit. Uh, I think people will understand where, where I come from. Um, and I, I'm going to save it till then. I know I, I'd love to tell my story, but I'm going to save it till then. So I just want to say, Nyawa, it's been an honor and good to look out to everyone. Many thanks, many blessings. Thanks to the captioners. Thanks to Niskasa, Seven Dancers, all our programs. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you for the next one. Much love. Take care, everyone. Bye.